I don't know, really amazing session. Um, so I got uh, an expert in salary negotiations with me as well. So today's session is all about Salary Power Hour, where we are going to talk about strategies for successfully negotiating your salaries. Um, so we're going to do this in two parts. First part we're going to do is how to prep for those performance reviews. You know, we have all the, we have year end coming up and then come January, companies will be doing sell, uh, performance reviews. And second part of today's segments, we're gonna talk about how to negotiate job offers when it, uh, for salaries. And then we will also end the session with Q&A, um, as well as a little meditation on clearing our blocks around money. Because when it comes to salaries, it's money, right? So a lot of it is internally how we feel about money. And then there's blocks that may be fear around money we might be holding on to. So I would lead a 10 minute clearing money block meditation to help you clear any blocks that might be subconsciously you might be holding on to. So before we kick this segment off, please go share uh, and invite your friends and families. Share this with on your LinkedIn and invite people to come on and join this uh, session today as well. I would love to welcome uh, my co-host guest speaker today, Dorothy, who, by the way, I just met uh, through a LinkedIn Live event. <laughs> we don't know each other at all. So this is the first <laughs> time we actually spoke, uh, but we met recently on a LinkedIn audio event. Uh, no, not an audio one. It was a LinkedIn Live event. And I shared something in the comments and she's like my thoughts exactly. And that's kind of how we connected. So that's the power of LinkedIn, guys. Uh, you can connect to anybody, even those amazing events by just, you know, sharing your thoughts and comments. It's why I always encourage everyone to speak, engage, unmute, come up and share your thoughts. Don't hesitate once to come up and speak because you just don't know who you will end up meeting. I've met so many great people. I meet so many great people on LinkedIn all the time, but lately I've been attending a lot of LinkedIn audio events and I've met so many great human beings through LinkedIn audio events simply just speaking. Okay, so before we kick off, um, I would just like to do a five minutes um, us to just really clear our energy so we can be really present today into uh, today's session. So if everybody can just close their eyes and let's just do a breath work exercise of five rounds of breath work where we are going to, I'm going to walk you through, I'm just going to play a little bit of music to help us get into the right uh, frame mindset. Okay, so close your eyes and take a deep breath in for four, three, two, one. Hold that breath for four, three, two, one. Exhale that breath for four, three, two, one. Take another deep breath for four, three, two, one. Hold that breath for four, three, two, one. Exhale for four, three, two, one. Take another deep breath in. As you take this breath, invite in fresh, new energy, the energy that you would love to embody. And let's hold that breath for four, three, two, one. Exhale. And this time, just release everything that no longer serves you. Stress, tension. Just let it all go. Let's take another deep breath in, inviting fresh new energy for four, three, two, one. Hold that breath for four, three, two, one. Exhale. As you exhale, just 
release fear, tension, stress, anything that you're just holding on just doesn't serve you anymore. Just let's release it. And you can sigh it out like this. You can even stick your tongue out, whatever works for you. So let's take another deep breath. This is our last breath for four, three, two, one. Hold that breath for four, three, two, one. Exhale for four, three, two, one. Now just put your hand on your heart. And I would love to invite you now to set intentions on what you would love to receive today. What would you like to learn? Your intentions were set today will help us and generically also deliver what you want to learn. So just let's take a moment to set our intentions for what we, why we're here and what we want to learn today. And then open yourself to receive all that. And just open your heart and receive. Okay, so let's begin. If you're ready, you can open your eyes and we are going to begin. Okay, so if you love that little breath work, uh, feel free to show that heart emoji. This is a simple little exercise that you can do. The reason I wanted to do this today was simply because we're going to be talking about money. And then when it comes to money, we all can have a lot of tension, stress financially, and then a lot of stuff emotionally does come up. <clears throat> so I just wanted to take that moment to clear everyone's energy so that you can be open and receptive to receive uh, the teachings and strategies that both Dorothy and I are going to go over today. So it's a simple exercise, breath work you can do. is like you count, uh, take in deep breath, you count for four, you hold for four, and you release for four. It's a simple little breath tool exercise that you can do throughout the day. Okay, so first of all, let's give a warm welcome to Dorothy, who is an interview and salary negotiation coach. Welcome, Dorothy. Feel free to uh, introduce yourself to the audience. Hi, friends. Thank you, DC, for the introduction and the opportunity. And you were right about the power of LinkedIn. It is amazing how many people are doing such good work on here and to find each other's tribe is uh, just simply rewarding. So thank you. Uh, so friends who are listening, um, I'm an interview and salary negotiation coach, and I've been doing this for about 10 years. Uh, I've been negotiating for about 20 years, uh, over 500 negotiation deals across large companies like uh, Philips, GE, um, you know, any, any of those big Fortune 100, 500 companies. So one of the things that over the my 20-year career, I've realized that uh, while we go to school for a lot of financial information, a lot of um, understanding how operations work, not a lot of uh, uh, focus, deals across large oh, sorry. Fo focus is given to, um, to understanding how to speak up for our own worth. And we may have one negotiation class somewhere in between some in one of the classes, but ne never about how to negotiate for ourselves. And so that's what I teach, um, anything, everything from how to position yourself in interviews. Success for making sure that no money is left on the table. So that's a little bit about myself. My really briefly, my uh, journey is as an immigrant uh, uh, I'm from uh, a foothills of the Himalayas, a small province called Assam, India. And I had to figure out everything in a new country on my own. And so I want to be a resource and help for people who don't have the social support or social uh, structure um, and uh, provide career navigation and salary uh, negotiation support. So a little bit about me. Very, very honored to be here today. Thank you. It's so exciting to have you, and I'm honored to, that you agreed to do this. 
Um, so those that don't know me, my name is Gerby Corman. I am uh, an HR expert with 20 years of experience. Um, I also became a career coach, and I've been doing career coaching as long as I have been uh, in HR. And I've helped, I'm an expert in helping career professionals land six-figure jobs as well as build a six-figure successful career. Um, and I've been named top 15 LinkedIn expert as well as top voice for job search strategy on LinkedIn as well. And I've been featured on various different media outlets like Wall Street Journal, The Globe and Mail, uh, CBS News, and so on. So welcome today. And today we're doing a special segment, which is salary negotiations. And this topic is really important for many reasons and but for simple reasons is that someone who's worked in HR for 20 years, I've seen a lot, the ins and out. I think one thing many people, career professions overlook is negotiating their salaries. I've seen this in 20 years. And fears come up, especially when you get a job offer. A lot of times career professionals, job seekers, when they get the job offer right away, the fear of, oh, wait, if I ask for more money, they might retract the offer back or I might look greedy or I don't want to lose this offer, so I'm just going to take it. Um, and even in uh, performance reviews, I've seen when it comes to performance reviews, how many uh, employees don't prep for these performance reviews prior to going into that meeting so that they, you are better, have better opportunities in that bargaining power of negotiation. So today's goal is to help you be, become in that power of uh, negotiating salaries. And we're going to walk you through step by step. So let's kick off first part of is we're going to talk about because it's, it's December, we're near the end of the year, we know we're going to have performance reviews coming up. Let me do a quick poll in the audience. Um, how many people in the audience that are listening right now that have performance reviews coming up? Put a thumbs up just to feel the audience out. Any? Okay, so we have one or two people, a few people. Okay, so don't be shy, guys. Put that thumbs up if you have uh, performance reviews coming up. So that's the first part that we want to cover right off the bat. And then we will go into the second part will be salary negotiations when you get a job offer. So Dorothy, how about um, you kick off uh, by sharing some top five or it can be 10, but how do we, how can we prep better for those performance reviews and some strategies on asking uh, more money or salary negotiations when it's performance reviews. Yeah, yeah. This is such an important topic, right? Um, and I think a lot of us uh, fear, like you said, fear the uh, bringing up the concept of being paid for our worth. Uh, one thing you have to take away uh, from your mind is that fear, right? Because you bring skills to your work uh, workplace and they benefit from it. So you have to think of yourself as that service provider. Um, so one, one first, first tip is first find out what is your worth. Most people, when they start in an in a organization, they have, you know, say 10 different responsibilities. And over the year, they may take 15 more uh, uh, additional responsibilities, but your pay has remained the same. So it's very important to calibrate what it is that you are now doing for the organization at the end of the year and how much is that worth? So there are three sites that are not commonly known. I'm gonna give you here. Uh, th this is not, you know, you always have your Indeed and salary calculator and all of that, but try Team Blind, Team Blind, Levels FYI, and H1 Data. So these are three, uh, so Team Blind and Levels FYI, there are, it's kind of like a Reddit uh, group, but about income and salary. So you find out what people in your field and your uh, role and in your region are making. So that's a really great way to understand what it is that you're worth based on the work you're doing. Uh, you also have to be aware uh, of the company's performance. So if the company has done really well and they're touting in social media and uh, in their financial reports that had a great year, uh, increased revenue, increased profits, 
then perfect. That is a great time for you to ask for more money. Um, then, you know, I always recommend don't, don't wing it. Just write out your pitch. It doesn't have to be a big, uh, long professional thesis. You could just say, I've enjoyed being part of the company. Uh, I worked on various projects. This is how the company benefited. And this is how I also went and got new skills. And this is how I'm going to continue to benefit. You know, simple as that, right? Um, and then the last tip I will give you is uh, think the best way for other people to receive your information is if you speak their language. So I think most of you will agree, you know, if you're talking to a numbers guy uh, or, or girl, then uh, you want to speak in numbers. So what my trick is, when you're sitting across somebody, think about a celebrity equivalent for that person. So is this person an Oprah? Is this person a... Um, Tom Hanks, yeah, or is it Mr. Rogers, or is it Gordon Ramsay? And then you know those familiar uh, people, and then you say, okay, if I talk to Gordon Ramsay, I want to talk about results. I want to talk about numbers, data. So that's how you get the maximum impact from your pitch when you know what language you're speaking to and what language they're going to receive you in. Hope that helps. Definitely, that's amazing. Um, that's great advice. So I want to add on to that is <clears throat> I like the pitch. So what I like to do is, so I'm just going to build on from Dorothy. So number one thing you want to do is, um, is tally up. Now I think a, a lot of times we look at like pay scales and all this market research. What I like to educate people on is, what I want to educate you guys is, the market rate is a general guideline. It's not your market rate, okay? So the market rate only looks at a couple of, a few things. The number of years experience you have, um, the skills you have, the credentials you have, right? Here's what it doesn't calculate. It doesn't calculate your capabilities. It doesn't calculate your powerhouse, which is your brain. Okay, everybody has a unique brain. No two people have the same brain. Your, your brain is your superpower, okay? It doesn't look at the types of problems you solved at all, okay? So we got to uh, put a dollar value on all that too, right? It doesn't look at your gifts. We all gifted human beings. We all have a gift. And doesn't take account of um, your talents as well. So as a whole of you is showing up to work every single day, the whole of you needs to put a dollar value on you, okay? Now, number two, I'm gonna add that to the pitch. So what you wanna do is prep work before these meetings. And I suggest you start doing them now, okay? Don't wait until the last minute to do this. Um, when I coach my clients who are either looking to get promoted or have a promotion on hand or these performance reviews, what I like I walk them through is first let's look at everything you've done this year. So look at the problems you have solved, projects you have worked on. Now the problems you have solved, what was the outcome and result, right? We want to tie it back to money because businesses, so I love when uh, Dorothy said, you know, uh, numbers, if somebody's a numbers guy. So I'm going to say it doesn't matter if the person in front of you is a number guy or not, but you still want to have your numbers because human beings, when we can bring in numbers into the play, it gives a good, clear identification and will help you build your strong, uh, your case stronger to getting a higher salary. Now, talking about salary, uh, salary and performance increases, companies usually have a standard gu guidelines around this. And this is where I just want to share the inside knowledge working in HR. Typically, a company will give everybody like a 1% increase for cost of living adjustments. And then everything else is de dependent on your performance, right? And then if you do get a bonus, it's all dependent on how the company does. So you may want to visit your bonus uh, structures and, and really read that and understand where that is because we're going to use all this information to build our case, right? So what we want to look at is the problems you solved, the type of projects you worked on, and the solutions you've implemented. I want you to tally all that. 
Now what I want you to do is look at the value you're bringing. What value did you bring in this entire year to the company? The value is all about money, time, and savings. And we, we want to tie this to cost cuttings. Maybe you introduced solutions that cut costs, saved company a lot of money, right? Maybe you introduced, for example, if you took a manual process and you automated it, that's going to be cost cutting, cost savings, labor cost just got saved, time has been increased and in processing something, right? And it's definitely gonna generate revenues and increase profits. So what we wanna look at, also what I would love for you to do is start looking at these things. Where have I cut costs? Where have I increased money? Or generate money and revenues or incomes? Where I have savings? Where, where did I save the company? in time, labor cost, all this. This goes right down to the, the problems you've solved, the solutions you've implemented. You wanna have your numbers because number is the number one bargaining power of negotiations. You can't go to the table and negotiate with, I, I've done this, I, I've completed these projects, I've done this, but numbers, when you can go with facts and figures and numbers, cause data doesn't lie, you will be in a much more bargaining power of negotiations. Now, pitch. I like to add on to Dorothy's and introduce you a little bit of, not a little bit, but I say, I say let's level up and put a pitch deck together. Okay, to treat this like going to a meeting. Do you show up to your meetings at work unprepared? Don't we prepare decks presentation decks, when we go into meetings, uh, especially when we're going in front of decision makers to pitch and buy-ins and so on, we have our de presentation decks and we walk them through our presentation. So that's a similar concept what I want you to do is do that for you. Have your deck, your pitch deck ready of the problems you, the projects you've worked on, solutions you've implemented, problems you've solved, how much money you've saved, how much money have you generated. And if you don't know how to do uh, what I'm saying, or you don't, you may not know how to put all these wordings. This is where we can leverage the power of AI, like ChatGPT, to come up some uh, help you come up with the the wording and brainstorming. So you can use Canva to create that pitch deck. The more you prepared, the more preparation and pre um, and more you are prepared going into these meetings, you are going to be more successful. Now. To get more money out of the company to pay you more salary is not an easy task to do. Like companies will typically give you like a 2% or 3%. To get those big increases, this is what you want to do. You gotta build a case, right? You gotta build a case and you can't go into the case building by simply saying, this is what I accomplished. So the more prepared you go into these meetings, the better your chances are going to be to uh, get that big increase and you definitely want to do all the stuff I just me and Dorothy just highlighted um, as well and put a pitch deck together and build that case for why you deserve a much more higher salary now maybe you want a promotion maybe you're ready for it all this information is going to help you build that case as well okay um, any questions on this piece Anybody in the audience that is looking for a salary increase or the performance reviews are coming up, um, bring your questions. So we'll do a Q&A before we move on to part two. Anybody has questions? There's a button at the bottom of this audio event screen that says raise your hand, click on that. There's a two-step process when you click on that. Uh, on the back end, I will be, when I see you have your hand raised, then only then I can give you access to speak. That's how LinkedIn Audio Events designed. So welcome, Mohammed. Hi, Gopi. Thank you so very much. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. All right. Um, so as a matter of fact, I have an upcoming um, um, negotiation going on, especially um, I just interviewed for a particular role within my own department. It's a you you could you call it you could call it a new role and a promotion at, at the same time, so they have a fixed budget and I have discussed the budget earlier earlier as well, 
and they were pretty uh, specific about it. And I've already worked on the deck thing, thingy that you told me. Um, I, I'm also a fan of decks uh, and showing value. So uh, apart from that particular deck and the next HR uh, meeting that we're going to have, hopefully by uh, Tuesday or Monday, what else do you suggest to do? What's next? Dorothy? Yeah. So Mohammed, what I would go in with is a what I call a want portfolio. So in your want portfolio, and you know, of course, this is a very big topic, right? But in your want portfolio, you're going to want to put um, what are the some of the things that are going to be beneficial to you. So first of all, it could be uh, monetary, like uh, I want to get a leadership coach, I want to get a communication coach. You know, th that's uh, money for you that you would have to spend on your own. Uh, but if the company will pay for it, then you use that. And most companies will have professional development budgets that are not always 100% tapped. So that is the one budget that you can always ask for and see what they say. In your one portfolio, there can be a lot, you can get very creative with it. You can be asking for flexible Fridays, work from home opportunities, hybrid, you know, just, just be very creative, spend about 30 minutes brainstorming. What are some of the other things than money that are going to make you and your life more satisfactory? So I put that down. And then the second part of that is, so say you've decided that this company is, you're tapped out. There's never going to be additional uh, growth or promotion opportunities or salary, and I'm making this up, right? So if that's the case, then you think about what is your next role and then what are your skills that you're going to need to get to that next role? And put that in your one portfolio, right? Because then you can ask for this company to pay for those skills. Like I want a stretch assignment in X, Y, and Z department, uh, make that happen. And you're always thinking ahead and forward for your uh, ultimate career growth. So think bigger and think more long-term. So that's, that's one of my big suggestions to you. Great, Dorothy. Those were amazing suggestions. Um, I'm just going to add on to what Dorothy said. Um, I would also do career, career mapping, career development mapping. <clears throat> just, uh, exactly what Dorothy said, right? So what you want to do is you want to look at where you are today and where you want to go next and look at everything you have. So let's pinpoint a role you want next, right? Uh, the next level up. What do you already have that's aligned with that role? And what is it that you don't have? So it's kind of like doing a gap analysis. So how can you further be prepared to land that role is where you can tie in back to what Dorothy said about professional development, right? Because that gap analysis will help you to identify the gaps uh, in skills or experience or <clears throat> professional development. And then pinpoint, okay, don't leave it up to the company to tell you which professional development you should do or take this training. Do your research on who do you want to work with when it comes to professional development. Maybe you want the leadership coach. Who do you want to work with? Start sourcing them out and get their pricing, interview them, right? What training do you want to go on next? What conferences do you want to go on? Um, there's tons of leading conferences happening uh, every year, right? Identify those uh, conferences as well that you would love to attend because conferences is also another great way to meet and network with other great individuals and grow your career further, right? Um, so that's what I would suggest doing as well. And then lastly, um, I just want to add a different opinion. <laughs> uh, and I think a lot of people don't do this enough. Please don't be loyal to the company you're with. If they don't have the money to pay you more, no problem, but that shouldn't be your problem. That shouldn't keep you there. I see this so many times where people stay with companies because company promised them they will definitely give them an increase next year or you know, six months down the road and that six months doesn't happen. One year goes by, they still didn't give you an increase. They keep coming up with excuses, but yet they keep adding more to your plate. Um, so please don't stay loyal. It's not your problem if the company doesn't have the money to pay you the increase. It's it's your time to then move on. Don't please, I, I'm speaking from 20 years of working in HR. 
the biggest mistake I see career professionals making over and over is they get so loyal to the company because there's comfort attached to it. You're comfortable where you are. You're comfortable working here. So you tend to overlook your needs, identify your needs, and, 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 and put yourself first. Not the company. It's not our problem if the company doesn't have money to pay us, right? Because there's another company waiting and they can pay us more. So if it's your time, please, 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 if you deserve more money and the company you work for is not giving it to you, I know from first-hand experience they're never going to give it to you at all. So it's time to move on. Make a plan. Okay, so these performance reviews are also a good indication of, hey, is the company going to give me what I deserve? If not, you know what? Now it's my time to start looking and I need to prep and start looking, invest in now getting a career coach or do it on your own, whatever works for you. But please, 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 please don't buy into the corporation's bullshits. Sometimes there are a lot of bullshits that we don't see. And I see them, I work behind the scenes, right? Um, and please just, I can't stress this enough. Please don't stay with the company if you deserve more money. Also use these performance reviews. Um, another scenario that I want to cover is I see a lot of times where, you know, especially this year has happened a lot. You know, look at how many layoffs happen in the company. Did your role increase? Did your responsibilities increase? That's something I didn't touch on and I want to touch on. So look at where you started in the beginning of the year and what was your role and duties and responsibilities that were assigned to you that were additional, additional. Have more things been added to your plate? Because when companies start to add more additional responsibilities and duties compared to what you were initially hired for, you know, it's time to get paid and compensated for that. And if a company can't pay you, I know somebody who worked for a company for seven years, never got an increase, never got an increase. And I was like, why did you stay? Why? And a lot of time is fear, uh, money mindset, lack of, uh, you know, uh, fear of, yeah, I'm, I don't want to go look for a job because looking for a job, new roles, it's a lot of work, right? So these are things we also want to look at because yes, layoffs have happened. And chances of people's roles, uh, additional work and responsibilities being added to the plate has increased this year. So let's take into that consideration as well. And if the company can't pay you what you want, please, please, I'm telling you, I can't stress this enough, don't buy into their promises. They can't give you the money right now. They're never going to give it. It's yeah, time to okay, move on. Um, I fully agree with you, Gurpreet. You know, one of the things you could do in your this performance review to uh, to hundred percent know exactly what Gurpreet is saying that it's never going to happen. You when they say no, Mohabbat's like, so you know when they, you know it's like, hey, I want this, this, and this, and they'll say, no, I don't have the budget. Then put them on the spot because remember, it's your performance review of you as well as you reviewing the company. So say, okay, so if you don't have the budget now when are we going to plan for the budget and how are you going to help me get there? And if you get a very, um, you know, kind of a wishy-washy answer and it's not really giving you any kind of uh, clear direction that, you know, come August, we're going to set budgets for next year. Uh, we are going to plan for it. You've done a lot. I see that. And we're going to make this happen. So if you don't have concrete um, information from your manager like that, then you know that that's never going to happen. So then it's absolutely, you know, uh, that's your indication to make a change. Yeah, I'm just going to add to that is sometimes people will fall in the trap of the company says, I don't have a budget, but here's the game plan. We're going to make this happen. I'm going to go on a whole different route now. Just because I know somebody here needs to hear this. It's not, <laughs> it's not your problem. The budget is not your problem. They don't have a budget. No problem. Let me go find a company that has the budget because there is a company that has the budgets, right? If your company is not performing, if the employee you're working for, their, the company didn't perform well, no problem. Sympathize, no problem, but don't stay there. Go find a company that is doing, 
really well, right? So we live in a world where there will be one business not not thriving, there'll be another that's thriving, right? But it's it's not it's not our problem when a company doesn't have a budget. It's their problem. You know the saying it's it's you problem, not a me problem. That's the approach, right? So it's their problem, not a, not a you problem. And and I'm not saying you got to think like businesses do, right? When a company has to lay off and cut cost, it's a they don't sit there and say, oh my God, you know, Muhammad's such an amazing person. I'm going to feel so bad. It's not that we don't feel bad when we do layoffs. Of course it does. But we still have to do what's the bottom line is the business, right? We got to make those tough decisions for the business. You got to make that tough decision for your career. Your career is your business. Start treating it like a business. Let's remove the emotions out of it. I think um, this is what I've seen in 20 years is we a lot of career professionals, employees, are so driven by their emotions when they're working with the company versus saying, this is a business. I got to make business decisions. This is exactly what companies do. They don't let the emotions come in the way of decision making that's going to help the business further. You got to do the same thing. Okay. So again, highlighting company doesn't have the budget to pay you time to move on. It's that simple. I don't care how amazing that company is. If they're so damn amazing, they should pay you. Okay. I'm not Thank saying you. don't stay low. I'm not saying like, I'm not trying to discredit if there's an amazing company that treats you like gold and maybe they are struggling a little bit and you want to stay not a problem, but I'm going to tell you it's please come from a business mindset. Thank you, Gurpreet and Dorothy. So I, I hear what you were saying was about gap analysis in the professional development plan. And I hear what Dorothy was talking about, the warrant portfolio. So that is obviously one of those things that we can talk about. I'm going to negotiate with them about uh, maybe some certification, maybe some upcoming events. And like uh, you said about growth. So when I uh, talk, uh, talk with these folks about growth, so this is another question that I'm putting in. I hope it's beneficial to everybody here. So when I talk about this growth, so they, they might be like, hey, it's, it's about the money. I understand compensation is there, but that is a limit. But this particular role that I'm going to get in, it, it's a huge uh, career jump, right? It's a huge boost of a role. So uh, it, it, is it is a part of uh, negotiation that I am getting a very, very decent role, maybe starting something new from scratch, new projects, like you said, you know, stretching out the responsibility for to different domains. So that could be one thing. What do you uh, what do you say about that? Dorothy? So uh, I want to just uh, understand the question, Muhammad. So you're saying it is a stretch for you, so it's beneficial for you? Totally, yeah. It's a new role, yes. Okay. Uh, it, th th this, that could be a double-edged sword, right? So I'll obviously be interested in hearing what Gurpreet says, but, you know, like I'm a hiring manager, and, you know, if, if I'm truly stretching somebody uh -huh. into a new role, uh, I am going to get benefited by it as well. So if you are the person, you know, it's, it's a lot of companies will um, paint it as it's good for you. This is an opportunity for you. This is how you can stretch and grow and not pay you. Uh, so it's definitely, uh, definitely a double-edged sword because you, you, they're getting something for free, basically, right? You're going to, you're going to work hard. You're going to, uh, you know, kick it in the ass. So you're going to make it a, an amazing uh, department or project, whatever it is, right? The, all of the hard work and effort is going to come from you uh, and the company is going to benefit and they need to pay you for it. Um, however, if you think about it, if you're thinking like, I really need this skill to, even if I go somewhere else, uh, another company and they, uh, they're they going to value this, uh, then, you know, maybe you, you make the decision, but it has to be a choice that you make uh, to say, okay, I, I, I should be getting paid more I'm not going to get paid more, so I'm going to take this opportunity to learn it, and then I'm going to jump ship, and I'm going to get you know fifty thousand dollars more or hundred thousand dollars more at my next job. So it needs to come from you as a strategy and a plan for what comes next. But always be aware that if you're doing more, you should be paid for it. Definitely. Um, I would like to. Uh, I would like to add. To I that. sorry. One Thank second. You. One second. Let me just share my insights. Uh, before we you add, sure, please. Um, I agree with Dorothy. You know, this is a trap that every employee falls in. You start to think about, oh, 
I'm going to benefit. I'm going to benefit, so let me take the lower pay or let me not get the increase. Sure, you're going to benefit, right? This is, a, this is a tactic companies use. They will... Uh, they they position it in a way, but you are benefiting. You are getting it. No, yes, but who's benefiting even more? They are. Let me share some uh, some numbers. If you leave the company, okay. So I want to explain bargaining power. You have the most b bargaining power over an employer, because if you leave, if you get another job and you leave the organization to replace you, you know how much money it's gonna cost the company? Research shows that it will cost companies anywhere from 200 to 300% of the employee's ending salary to replace that, to replace them. Here's how, here's why the cost is so high. You know, loss of knowledge, loss of productivity, loss of efficiencies, the new employee coming to replace you, it's going to, depending on the role you're in, it can take them anywhere from six months to a year to get to the level you were at, right? That's a huge cost to the organization, okay? So you got to know this. When it comes to negotiations, everyone's going to use their tactic. The only person that's always in a disadvantage and doesn't know how to uh, negotiate is always the employees, because no one's teaching you how to negotiate, right? The businesses, this is their job to do, and they're going to always position that you are getting the better deal, and they're not. Meanwhile, it's the other way around. They're always getting the better deal, always. This is why I said, before you go to these meetings, exactly pinpoint every single problem you have solved and put money on it. If that problem didn't go solved, if that problem wasn't solved, how much was it costing the company to have that problem? And how much did the company benefit from having that problem solved? In terms of cost savings, cost cutting, generating revenues, maybe it generated more revenues, increased, uh, uh, increased profits. These, this is why these numbers are important. Why? Because when you know how much money Let's say you just, you saved company a million dollar. For example, I'll give an example. You let's say you took an automated pro, a, a manual process and automated it, right? And let's say that generated. Let's say it's a, a customer data. The one I can think of is the one I've been using lately. Um, a customer data entry was manually done and you automated it. I see you're driving digital transformation, right? So digital transformation, you're saving companies a shitload of money by digitalizing their, whatever you're digitalizing, right? So digitalization is, is huge savings for companies. There's time savings involved, right? And also it does generate more money for organizations to do it. There's a benefit associated to it. So, so when a company lets a data entry that you took a customer data entry and people were manually doing this and now you've automated it, Labor cost has been saved. Time has been saved to do it. Um, and now it's speed up the process. Customer retention has increased, right? All this is, let's say, equals 500K additional in revenue per month. Times that by 12 months, that's 6 million additional revenues for a company. Now, when you know this number, how much money should you be asking for? If you have generated... Six million additional money for a company through your digital transformation strategies, right? I'm just tying it back to you. Now, how much should you ask? The only reason why a lot of people don't know how to negotiate or to ask for the right amount because you don't know you're not doing it this way. You're not looking at money. You're not looking at if I took a digital, if I digitalized something, what was the situation look like before I digitalized? How much was it costing the company to in, ti in times, labor cost? Uh, uh, maybe customer, depending on who was the uh, stakeholders involved, the internal customer, outer cust uh, external customers. You got to have these numbers because that's going to help you be in that bargaining power. The person who the, has the most bargaining power is always the employee, but you just don't know it. And then companies take advantage of you.
And when you take the Lord deal, that is, the case. that is usually the case. And I, yes. I, I and unfortunately, I, I believe what uh, if, if it's such is the case, what happens is what Dorothy said. It becomes a strategic plan to take that particular position and then grow further. I would always say one thing: you gotta get paid in money, the money that goes in your bank accounts, for what you do. The work you do, the talents you bring, the skills you bring to the table, all the problems you solve, you deserve to get paid in money. Why? Let's take today's economy into play. Has your cost of living gone up? Has your grocery bill gone up? Has the gas price gone up? Food gone up? Look at your own cost of living day to day. So I am a big firm. I don't believe in, oh, ask for additional, like, okay, if a company can't pay you, then ask for all these other things. All, the other things they should give anyways. Professional development, every company has budget for, and every company does professional development, right? I'm a big, 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 big ass believer. You got to get paid in money, the money that goes into your bank account. Everything else is a retention strategy, and this is the HR and me now I'm talking. Professional development, HR, it's a retention strategy. Okay, bonuses, retention strategy. And productivity, efficiency, performance, tied, right? Um, benefits, health and benefits, vacation, all that is retention strategy. Company's going to give you that anyways. You're always going to get that. Yeah, you can get more. You're always going to get it. It's retention strategy. What you're not always going to get is that money that goes into the bank account. Always negotiate higher base salaries. Everything else, trust me, I have 20 years in working in HR, building compositions, retention strategies, employee uh, uh, engagement strategies. We spend a lot of money investing in employees because why? It costs money to le lose employees. And that cost is 200 to 300% of the employee's ending salary. Nobody wants to lose a good talent. When you understand this, what I just said, you will always, always negotiate higher and higher and higher for yourself or go where a company will give you that money. Don't fall in the comp employer's trap. Okay. Um, anything else, Mohammed? And by the way, thank you so much for sharing this information with us, coming up on the stage and asking your question um, because I'm pretty sure not only you benefited, so many other people benefited. And this is the power of coming up, guys, and um, asking questions because, yes, we have our segment on what we want to talk about, but you can add so much more value to the, the segment by asking your questions, and then we all benefit from it. Not just you, everybody benefits. So sharing is caring. Now I have a, a bunch of um, strategies right now in place. I just learned from you folks. Okay. So yeah, thank you guys. You are welcome. Job. We, you, you're right. We need training on um, salary negotiation. Everybody deserves it. Yes. Every single person deserves more money. You have two experts right here that are experts in salary negotiations. If you need that additional help, feel free to reach out to Dorothy or feel free to reach out to myself. And we can help you get more money, guys. Okay, so Mohammed, I'm just going to move you back to the listening. And I want to move on to the second part of the segment. Um, and please, guys, if you have questions, raise your hand, come up, and we will answer them. But I do want to move on to the second part. So second part is negotiating job offers. Now let's do a little bit of a poll in the audience. How many people in the listening is either looking for a new job opportunity. Just put a thumbs up if you are already looking for new job opportunities or you would be looking for a new opportunity in the near future. Okay, so, oh wow, okay. Thumbs ups are going up, great. So let's talk about how, do, how can you negotiate job offers? Um, so I'm gonna, let Dorothy lead, and then I'll add on to to Dorothy's if there's anything missing. Because if nothing's missing, then, we're, then we'll move on to Q&A. <laughs> there will be, be a lot missing uh, because, you know, we are uh, we're, uh, we're definitely have different strategies, but they all work. 
Uh, but one of the things that I'll definitely say is uh, very, very few of us when we're negotiating for ourselves truly put the right value on ourselves. So it's very important. So what, what, so if you're worth 200,000, it's very common for most of my clients to say, oh, I kind of deserve 120,000, 125,000. No, please stop that. So for, for you to get an objective view, I gave three sites in the beginning. Uh, you, you need to, first of all, do a, a portfolio of your skills and then go to these three sites, Levels FYI, Team Blind, and H1 Data. So one thing I'll say about H1 Data is this is what companies pay when they pay for talent, uh, when they sponsor their visa, in, and this is for U.S., uh, but they're, they're, this may not apply to all countries, but it gives you an idea of what a software engineer is getting paid uh, when a company sponsors, because they're required by the government to provide this information to disclose it. Uh, Team Blind and Levels FYI is like a Reddit chain, but about salary, and people provide their salary information up there. Uh, so that's definitely one to check. And then the third way to know your worth is check with your network. A lot of times people you've graduated with or people who are in the same professional field will be willing to share a range of what they're paying, what they're getting paid. So these three, uh, so these data points uh, and, uh, and then final one is of course, um, going to your regular sites like Indeed or Salary uh, to know a, a number. So with the three data points, then you triage and you say, this is what I'm worth and this is what I'm going to ask for. And nine times out of 10, if you add 20% to it, you'll still be at a reasonably decent number because research shows that we are always under clubbing our value. So you go, uh, when you propose your salary, um, use that number. And you know, there's a lot of debate out there on whether to throw out a number first or uh, throw out a number next. You know, I mean, as, the, as a negotiator, what I would recommend is don't throw out a number just yet. When they ask, what are your salary expectations? First, find out about the role. And then you say your salary expectations because you don't know if what they posted in the job description, and Gupreet, you'd be able to speak uh, very well to this, is, is probably just the tip of the iceberg of what you'll actually be doing. So you really need to understand more about the role before you say, I want this number but always have your salary number in your back pocket and let them give you the number, uh, give, let them describe to you what the role is and then start from there. Uh, and I'll pause Gurpreet because I know we're, we're kind of at time here. Um, I forgot to mention Dorothy, my segments always go over. <laughs> So if you have time, stick around. Okay. <laughs> if you have time, feel free to stick around. If you don't, it, uh, no problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I can, I can stick around. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So I'm just going to add on to what Dorothy shared. So first step is before you begin your job search, before you write that resume, <clears throat> what you want to do first is, well, how much are you worth? So... Dorothy shared some tools. There's one that um, she didn't mention that I would just like to add on, pay a scale. But here's how, what I want you to use, right? Um, you These tools, are keep in mind, is general guideline, right? They'll give you a general uh, market rate based on just three things, the number of years of experience you have, the skills you have, and then the credentials you have, okay? Um, you can also, Payscale will give you your own value based on these three things. And so all those salaries um, are just giving you these basic um, one half of the equation, right? Before I begin, actually, I want uh, what I want to do, how many people in the audience would like to make 50% more than they're making now or double their salaries? How many, like more than 20%. How many people want to make more money? Get paid more. So I see the thumbs up going up. Okay, so I'm going to tell you how to, you can actually double up your salaries. And the only reason, and now this is not a bullshit, guys. All my clients that I worked with me have doubled to nearly triple their salaries. Okay, so this goes back to what I was saying earlier. What you want to do is, one, <clears throat> What type of problems 
are you capable of solving? So salary negotiations begin from day one, the day you decide that you want a job, okay? So this is why we need to have a need to put a dollar value on you. So number one, what type of problems have you mastered in solving? What types of problems can you solve? What are those big problems you're solving that cost companies a lot of money, right? Again, ties down to money. Your brain is your superpower because no two people have the same brain. All the, all the tools that uh, Dorothy said to use, those are great benchmark tools. That should give you confidence that, okay, if you know they're saying that these three things give me this, this is my rate, uh, market rate, and these other people are disclosing their salaries, you also want to look at their capabilities. That should give you even more confirmation that you can ask for even more, right? So the type of problems you have solved, put a dollar value on those. What are you, the type of problems you are capable of solving? What are you an expert in? To make more money, we got to start positioning ourselves as experts. Full disclaimer, expertise has nothing to do with years experience you have, but it has everything to do with how many times have you solved a problem, the same type of problem over and over. The more you're solving a particular problem over and over and over, you've now mastered that. Okay. Number two, what's your blueprint, your framework in solving these problems? We all have our own blueprints, our unique blueprints in how we solve problems and how we come up with solutions, right? That blueprint is unique to you. That's your framework. That's unique to you. Kind of like think of a copyright, put a dollar value on it. Um, next is um, your talents. No, your own talents. Talents is not skills, experience, or credentials, okay? Talents is what's within you. We all have talent. Like, for example, have you ever heard a singer and you're like, oh my God, that, that singer is so gifted? That's a gift. A gift, right? Talent is a gift. So what talent or gift do you have? Okay? <clears throat> Put a dollar value on it. Now, once you look at all this as a big picture, if you can save companies millions of dollars or you have generated six million additional, your value has just gone up. Your value, I'm not talking about market rates, I'm talking about you, okay? Your value goes up based on the problems you can solve, right? If you wanna make more money in your career and you wanna land higher paying salary jobs, it all comes down to this key point is your expertise the, <clears throat> and the value you bring to the table in terms of the problems you can solve and generate how much money you can generate for companies. Now you put a dollar value on yourself, okay? So let's say I'm worth 200K. Now I'm not gonna go and say two companies give a salary, but first thing I need to do is now I gotta look the part. I gotta look like a 200K candidate, right? This starts with our personal brandings on LinkedIn. This starts with how we write a resume. You can ask for 200K and your resume looks like, let's say you're making 100K right now, your resume looks like 100K. You gotta play the part, right? You gotta look the part. So your resume needs to look like a 200K, it needs to speak like a 200K candidate. This is what I call planting the seeds. You gotta plant the seed before you can ask for the money you want. So this is the planting seed phase. So personal branding, LinkedIn profile, your resume, we got to now plant that seed. Then when it comes to going on these interviews, we're planting seeds in the interviews. How we, bef how we go and sh well, how we conduct those interviews got to come from 200K level, not from 100K. So whatever you did to get the 100K salary or your current salary is not going to work to getting a higher salary, right? There's a different framework and strategies to get more money. Um, so the interviews is also planting the seed. Now, when you get asked the salary question, you can always flip it back and ask them what's their salary range, right? But I have a better strategy than that. Who cares what their salary range is? We got to go find the companies that will give us 200K. So strategic planning, we're not going to waste our time with employers 
who are not going to pay us 100k so this is where strategic planning comes into play we got to first go identify companies that are in the one percent of the employers who pay top dollars for top expertise top skills top talent right those companies exist those companies exist we got to go identify who those companies are and then we can now f plan our entire strategy to market ourselves with these companies so now this is marketing strategy we got to market build a marketing strategy that's a, that speaks to only these companies there's only one percent or six percent of employers out there that will pay that want the best of the best top-notch talent and willing to pay top dollars to get those experts and you want to work for those companies so then we do our marketing strategy plan uh, to target these companies 80 percent of all available jobs are not advertised by the way okay so don't rely on job postings. If you want to double or triple your salaries, we can't rely on job postings. We got to hit the hidden job market. Okay, so that's where the strategic planning comes into play, the marketing strategy of how to, who's, who are we marketing? Let's identify those companies. And then we, uh, we approach those and track those companies to either come to us or we approach them. So there's a two-way thing that got to happen. And now when we're in talks with these companies, we can confidently, if you want 200K, you give a range. You never say 200K. You give a range. That buffer, right? If I want 200K, I'm going to say um, 200 to, let's say, 20K. The buffer period, the buffering is, um, is where the role, your responsibility is, right? So it's not about job postings or job descriptions. So Yeah, sometimes the companies have job descriptions that really don't even match what the role is. So when I work with hiring managers, I always tell them to have buffers. The ideal candidate you want, the role has a, a dollar value. The ideal candidate you want has its own value. And the candidate you end up hiring will have its own value. So we got a buffer in, in the budgets. So this is how I strategically work with my hiring managers. I walk them through the, the ideal candidate they want. We'll ha we put a salary range on that. Right, but then we have to have buffers in place because the actual candidate you will end up going with will have its own market rate or its own value, salary, value, right? The value dollar value on it. So then, the way we budget, strategically, the way I help my my managers budget is that buffer. So the ideal candidate you want is this is the market rate for that candidate. That's how much they're going to be worth. But then we got to buffer in the one you go for probably have more than what you're looking for, right? Because always candidate will always have something different uh, to bring to the table. And then you market yourself. Now this is why you got to ask those salary range, give a range, never just give one number. So that's buffering. You got to do the buffering too. Companies are doing buffering. You got to do the buffering. So the planting of the seeds, all this strategy is going to help you get more money. And then when you do land that job offer, you do got to negotiate. And you don't just negotiate the base, you negotiate everything. So I hope that helps. So those are some of the things I walk my clients through on when they're looking for job opportunities. So salary negotiations actually happen the minute you decide you want to look for a job. You know, Gurpreet, one of the things I'll add, uh, like 100% agree with you, you know, you can't, if you want a $200,000 job or a $300,000 job, you can't show up with, you know, a $50 resume. That is so important that I recently helped a client who had paid somebody to do a resume and they charge $50. And the resume was just, it, it did, you know, like it, it would be like, you know, you're, you're shopping for a Ferrari, but you know, it's in the Walmart parking lot. You know, it just, it was just completely incongruent. Uh, and, and, you know, nothing, nothing wrong if, if that's, you know, that's the brand, but if you want a brand and you want to, um, you want to show as the executive with the executive presence, then you've got to, like you said, plant the seeds, everything that you do or say, or revolves around you should reflect that. And, and that's where, uh, the power of, uh, you know, working with somebody uh, helps you, right? So you can show up as that. 
Yes, um, <clears throat> great point. <clears throat> a lot of times when people are looking for jobs, they just go and get a resume writer and think that's it. But resume writers can't help you with all that stuff that, you know, I just walked you guys through and Dorothy walked you through. Because getting more money isn't as simple as let me get a resume done. Now, you mentioned $50 resume. I'm laughing because $50 is not an expert. Expert would not charge $50 to write a resume, right? I'm not saying don't go hire resume writers. That's not my pitch here. <clears throat> but you got to know, you know, if you want to double your salary, how can somebody who's charging $50 do that for you? They can't. Because if they know how to double your salary, why are they charging $50? Just something to think about, guys. Somebody who charges more money will always get you more money because they because they are valuing themselves correctly and help, hence they will help you value yourself correctly. The dollar value, right? Dollar values is all about the results you get. It's not credentials, experience, and skills. Those are nice to have, but ultimately that's not how companies hire, right? Those are nice to have that gets you that conversation, but what gets you the job is not going to be experience and skills and credentials anymore that just an entryway but what gets you the job is that can you solve the problems can you get me money can you what's my ROI from hiring you you always got to know the ROI the company's getting from hiring you because the company's going to invest money in you you got to generate three to four times or even sometimes ten times more right if you can generate ten times more ROI your value on on the dollar value of you just went up. A lot of people don't know how to put a dollar value on themselves correctly. And that's, I can tell you working in HR in 20 years, I've seen this every single day. It's why it drove me to be, do what I do now as a career coach. It's why I've helped people double to triple their salaries because majority of people are already underpaid and they don't know it. When you ask for market rate, you're underpaid. You're underpaid already. So if you, if you go look at pay scale, whatever pay scale is telling you your market rate is, market rate equals getting underpaid. It's actually the surefire way of getting underpaid. Because that's not your true value. You as a human being individual have your own value and you need to put a dollar value on you as a whole too, right? Market rates don't give, keep in mind market rate doesn't know you. How can they put a rate on you when they don't know anything about you? They're just giving you a guideline, a general guideline. Okay, so if I truly believe everyone deserves to make a lot of money and get paid a lot for what they bring to the table, but you need to know what you bring to the table. Bringing to the table isn't experience, skills, and credentials. Trust me on that. You bring a hell, a hell a lot of that, more than that. So that's why you got to put a correct dollar value on you. And if you don't know how to do that, then yeah, work with an expert like Dorothy and myself. Because last, in the end of the day, it's your choice, right? If you don't correctly put a, put a correct dollar value evaluation on yourself, like look at house pricings. You know, do they go by... You know, a one house in one city can cost a different price, right? The dollar value of a house is based on the city, the demand, what it provides, right? So, and, I, and this is probably a bad example because I know someone's not going to say, but if I'm in this city, then I need to put this value. It's not based on the city you live in that your dollar value should be driven by. It's the individual of you, your brain, the problems you can solve, what you've mastered in your career, you're putting a dollar value on you. You had set skills, right? Like, neurosurgeon is an expert in brain surgeries, but that neurosurgeon knows the entire body functions, how a body operates, right? General surgeon and a neurosurgeon is two different people, right? Now, just a quick question on the audience. If you had a brain issue, 
do you want the general surgeon to operate on you or the brain surgeon? 100% you want the brain surgeon because that person is the expert in that. But that brain surgeon knows everything that the general surgeon knows how to do as well. <coughs> but they invested to become an expert in brain surgery. So this is the reason I'm using this as an example is a lot of us keep ourselves in general and position ourselves as generals in our fields because, oh, I know how to do everything. But we fail to position ourselves as neurosurgeons in our field. When you start to see yourself as that neurosurgeon who has to know how to do general surgery too, like has to know because your training is all that, you still have to know how, to, how the entire body functions in order to become a surgeon, in order to then specialize in a niche. So I encourage you to start thinking about what are you an expert in? What's your position? What are you a brain surgeon in, in your field? That's going to be how you differentiate yourself and get more money. There's nothing wrong with general surgeons, by the way, like we have general sur surgeons. So just know what you want. Do you want to be general? No, no problem with that. Or do you want to start becoming an expert in your field? Experts always make more money. Okay, so let's open the floor. Um, I don't want to take too much time. It's 1212. 12. If anybody were, believes a number sign, 1212, 12, make a wish. Uh, let's open the floor up for questions. If you have questions, please raise your hand, bring your questions, or if you want to add what you learned today, feel free to share that information as well. Or anybody has a different tactic in salary negotiation, please we open the floor to you to share your insight. Now, as we wait for questions to come in, if you want to work with any of us, feel free to reach out to Dorothy directly, send a connection request to Dorothy by clicking on her name. You can click on everyone's name, by the way, and connect directly with them. So if you go to Dorothy's name, three dots will appear, and click on view profile, and then you can connect with her. Make sure you add a note saying, hey, Dorothy, I attended your session. Personalize it to what you learned from her. And that's how you're going to stand out from everybody that messages her, right? Um, same thing if you want to connect with me, please add a note. Now, full disclaimer, you have to add a note to me because I am about to max out my 30,000 limit on connection. So LinkedIn has a connection limit and I am like maybe 50 shy of that. Um, so if you want to connect with me, please add that note because without that note, I may not accept uh, simply just because I'm almost close to maxing out my connection requests. And once I max out, it's going to be so hard to, and then I can't accept people, then I got to go clean out my connections. So add those notes, connect with us. If you want to work with any, uh, any of us, feel free to reach out to us. So let's open the floor, guys. Bring your questions. Don't be shy. Uh, you know, this is, money is everything. I know someone's going to say, well, money's not everything, but let's be realistic. Money determines how we live. So money should be important. Money is not evil. Love money, love money. This is where I was going to do the money energy clearing uh, session. So if there's questions, bring them up. And then I will end the session with money clearing if their time permits. But just money mindset. You do have to have abundance mindset to make more money. Okay. So don't give negative energy to money. Money is the most blissful thing. It's the most beautiful thing in this world. Because if you have the capabilities of making more money, you can give back more in the in the world through financials. You can go eat dinner at restaurants. That's going to help that restaurant make money that day, right? You can go buy that clothes. That's adding back to the economy. This is an ecosystem. If we don't, like take the recession. Why does recession happen? Like the inflation rate, different stuff happens, happen in the economy ends up the buying, right? When people are not buying, we'll always have a poor economy. When people have money to buy, the economy's booming. So how can money be evil? How can it be a bad thing? How can it be a greedy thing? 
the entire ecosystem works on money. If we don't have money to spend, we can't give back to the ecosystem. The ecosystem's going to then fail, right? It's gonna, it's gonna uh, disrupt the ecosystem, and then we're gonna have hardship in financial for everybody involved. And that's what the three years has taught me, anyways. Uh, COVID, when pandemic happened, shutdowns happened, I made a mission to support as many local businesses as I can. I I don't eat out, but I started eating out, started wherever I could support financially, I supported businesses. So money, we need money to do that. We want, We need money to give to charities, to give to the other people who financially can't, right? We can't be someone's financial support or give financial support to somebody if we don't have money left over to give. That's the abundance mindset. So when you spend money, don't see it as money leaving. See it as abundance. See it as 10 times money is coming back to me. See it as I'm giving money. This is going to help this business flourish. Abundance mindset. Abundance mindset will always attract more. Okay, so don't come from lack, but come from that abundant space. Uh, and then you can do those breath works to help you get into that abundance mindset. Uh, and you can use affirmations to get rewire your brain to start thinking on abundance level because it's just the thoughts and conversations we're having with ourselves. Okay, so guys, last call for questions. Um, or feel free to share your insights, how you found the session. Did everybody like today's session? Did you get value? Did you learn a lot? Put a heart emoji. If you truly, you know, got something today from our session. Heart emojis. Okay, so great. That's why we're here. So last call. Does anybody has questions for us? There's a button at the bottom of the screen where you can raise your hand. Um, so hit that button. Last call, guys. Last, last call. Okay, no questions? Okay, so let's wrap up this session with, I'm gonna do a 10 minute money, money energy clearing session. Um, if you wanna stay for that, feel free to stay. If that doesn't resonate with you, you don't have to stay. So we're wrapping up the session with a money clearing energy session. So it'll be like a 10 minute. So I'm gonna play some music and walk you through a meditation to help clear this out for you. So close your eyes. Um, if it helps, you can lie down, lie on a couch, or you can uh, sit, whatever works for you, okay? I'm gonna tune into and connect to everybody here. I'm gonna connect to your energy. I am an energy healer, so that's why I'm gonna be connecting to you guys. If you uh, give me permission to connect to you, just in your mind's eye, just say yes, and I'll be able to connect to you. And then we can guide, then this will really work personalized to you. As I connect to your energy, I just want you to take deep breaths in and exhale. Let's just do a couple of rounds of that. So just take some deep breaths in. And as we're doing this, I'm connecting to your energy. Now, when I say the word money, what comes up for you? Just let your thoughts flow. What comes up for you when you hear the word money? Do you have fears that you will never have enough money? 
you feel that you you can afford you can't afford your dream house you can't afford the car you want or you know when it comes to spending money how do you feel about money so let everything that you feel about money come up the fears the doubts these are blocks that we want to clear so i'm going to give you a few minutes to do that bring up everything that you feel about money so that i can clear it for you your body and washing away all your fears around money clearing out past situations that happened that created fear around money a lack of money this divine white light is just clearing all this out for you now from your body, from your mind, from your subconscious mind, from your conscious mind, from your aura, as well as from generations and generations. We're clearing all this out now. up facing up and be in receiving mode I want you to just visualize the universe God if you believe in God whoever you believe in is now just showering you with abundance just unlimited abundance is flowing into your life now from everywhere you don't need to know how abundance will come, but it's just coming. You don't have to do anything. And just open your heart up. Open yourself to receive abundance, prosperity. Money is just flowing into your life now. Allow it to come to you. Allow it to flow into your life. Visualize your bank account increasing every single day. Every day, 
more and more money is coming into your life more and more money is being deposited into your bank account every day your bank balance just keeps going up and up and up and up so just sit there and just receive all the money you want and the universe is giving you even more than what you want because what we ask for universe always delivers but always deliver more so now you have more money than you even thought was possible or imagined unlimited abundance is just flowing and flowing and flowing how does that feel feel that energy So I'm going to silent for a couple of minutes and allow you to just receive all this now. I'm going to say one affirmation and I want you to keep repeating this over and over even when you leave the session today you can also come up with your own affirmation I just say one simple affirmation which is money is constantly flowing into my life from everywhere money is constantly flowing into my life from everywhere Money is constantly flowing into my life from everywhere. Money is constantly flowing into my life from everywhere. Money is constantly flowing and flowing and flowing in my life every single day. A large sum of money is flowing into my life every single day. Money is constantly flowing, flowing and flowing into my life. Now put your hands together in a prayer. And now let's give thanks to the universe to shower us with this money. Thank you, thank you, thank you for giving me all this money. Thank you universe for showering me with unlimited abundance. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I share my abundance with others. I give money to others, knowing that it will come back to me 10 times more fold. So today now we're going to use all our powers together. We're going to collect as a group. And now we're going to flow money to each other. So just visualize that you're flowing money, you're giving money to each other. So we're gonna flow this abundance energy to each other. So just visualize this now and we flow abundance to each other. We flow money to each other. And as we do this, we're gonna multiply and the amount of money that we're gonna receive back.
And now we put our hands on our hearts, filled with gratitude. And we ground this energy in, because this is your new reality. Before you open your eyes today, when you open your eyes after this, that's your new reality. You are abundant. You have unlimited abundance in your life. Unlimited source of money is flowing into your life. That is your new reality and that's the energy I want you to embody. So feel it in your body. Feel it in your heart space. Feel it in your soul. And then when you're ready, I want you to embark on this energy. Live your life from this energy energy that's flowing in your in you right now this is the truth this is your energy and you want to operate your life from this energy so i'm grounding we're grounding this in just imagine an energy light energy from top of your head flowing into your body all the way to your legs to your feet and going into mother earth and we ground this in now today if you get a chance go out in nature if you live in a like a hot weather walk on mother earth Feel the grass, feel the sand. And if you live in the cold part of the country like I do, you can simply go out and just touch a tree. Connect to Mother Earth. It's one of the best ways to ground ourselves and feel connected to Mother Earth. Mother Earth is our protector. She is always providing and providing. So connect to her. Thank you for giving me this opportunity today to do this for you. I set intentions for every single soul that's listening to this that you receive 10 times more abundance and money now. Thank you. Whenever you're ready, feel free to open your eyes slowly. You can always get up, move if you were lying, shake your body. And whenever doubts come up, just say release, release, release. When fear come up, say I release you now, I release you now, I release you now. When lack of money, energy shows up, say I release you now, I release you now, I release you now. And free yourself. And then affirm. Money is constantly flowing in my life. So this is a practice you can do. So when you when you pay your bill, close your eyes and go into gratitude and say, thank you, universe, for giving me money to pay this bill. I attend that I get 10 times back. But when we pay our bills, you know, that business is flourishing as well. You can set intentions as I pay this bill. Thank you, God, for giving me bill money to pay this bill. And I set intention that this business flourishes and receive unlimited abundance. The energy we give out in the world, we receive back 10 times. So if we're giving out energy of lack, we're going to receive lack. If we give energy of abundance out, we're going to receive abundance. If we give out the energy of, oh my God, I don't have enough money, then we're going to get more of that. So you are a conscience creator. You are the creator. We are consciously creating every single day through our thoughts. So pay attention to your thoughts. Become self-aware of your thoughts. And you can change your life for the better. So it's important that we become really aware of the thoughts to be honest. 
And the more you become aware of your thoughts, the energies you feel, the more you'll be able to clear all that out and have an abundance mindset. And I just want to put a full disclaimer out there. Some of us can happen instantly and some may have to work through some stuff. Okay, but just always know that money is constantly flowing to you. Money loves you. Money is attracted to you. Just make an affirmation so that when those energies or negative thoughts or feelings come up about money, you just close your eyes, do that breath work I taught you, and clear your energy and just say, nope, money loves me. I'm abundant. I'm blessed. Okay, so thank you everybody for being here if you love this meditation uh, show me a heart emoji it's something you can always come back to to do as well feel free to share your feelings and thoughts around this if if this impacted you feel free to message me and let me know um dorothy final ending thoughts uh just uh you know tying into what you just helped us through with meditation please uh friends you know, value yourself, no one else will. So that's, that's my one thing you have to remember. No one is waiting to pick you. You have to pick you and you have to invest in yourself. So please remember that and remind yourself every day. And meditations like this, of course, are great ways to keep that front and center in your mind. Yes. So guys, thank you so much. My ending remark is never undervalue yourself. Always know your worth and put a true dollar value on you and align yourself to those that will pay you for that. Don't align yourself to companies or employers or people that can't pay you. Okay, Walmart and Gucci. Gucci doesn't uh, change its pricing because someone can't afford it. Gucci aligns itself to those that can pay that price. And I know tons of people that save money and go get Gucci purses or Gucci belts and Gucci, 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 or any brand, right? Um, and that's the mindset. There's a market for everybody. There's someone can forge you. Okay, just know someone will pay you the money you want, but you have to want it first. Whatever you want, the energies you feel and the doubts and self-doubts, you know, everybody just mirrors back to us, this my final thought and ending mark is just remember this one line. If you don't remember anything, just remember this one line and this will change your life. Every one is mirroring back to me what I feel internally inside myself. Everyone's just a mirror. Whatever is playing out in your reality, see it as a mirror. If you don't like it, change you inside. It's all inside. It's one of the things that this meditation that I just walk you through, by the way, I walk my clients through, we do. The reason why my clients have double or triple their salaries is because I focus not just strategies to get that job, how to get that salary, but mindset. The internal is is the most crucial piece on living the life we want to. It's also one of the most crucial piece to step into your power and your gifts. You know that whole word authenticity, I, I don't like it just simply because nobody teaches us how to be authentic. This meditation, tuning into your soul, your energy, is how you become authentic. The, your soul is the most authentic piece in this world. Strip away the layers and the masks you're wearing that keeps you hidden from your true self, your soul. Your soul is meant to shine in this world. Let it shine. By removing the masks that you wear every single day, that strips you away from your power. Step into your soul, step into your power, and create the life you desire. Your desires are meant for you to have. That's why you have a desire. I heard my Reiki healer said this. 
You only have a desire because it's meant for you to have it. Otherwise, you wouldn't have it. And that's what I want to leave with you today is all that you desire, you're destined to have it. It's meant for you to have it. Don't worry about the how and why or when you're going to get it. That's not our jobs to do. We just know we have a desire and it's meant for us to have it. Trust the universe will show you how to get it. We'll send you the right people, the right guides, the right people will show up in your life that are meant to show you how to get it. Or maybe you'll know how to get it when you start listening to your heart. Everything in this life is possible. Everything is reachable as long as we want it. So just remember, your heart desires are meant for you to have it. That's why you have it. That's why you have that desire. Okay? So thank you so much. Everybody have a blessed for Saturday. And I be continuing my uh, campaign that I started back in November 21st, which was get me hired by Christmas. Um, so I've been doing these job search stuff every day. Uh, today I had Dorothy joining me. Um, I'm going to have a couple other people joining as well. And I will, the last day of those session is December 21st. So feel free to hit that button on my uh, profile, the bell button, so that you never miss out on these segments because I've been going strong every single day since November 21st. And, and so happy to hear the great news when people message me to, to tell me they landed a job. So there's already so many people that have landed jobs uh, through my training, through these segments. And it's nice to get all, pe all these people employed before Christmas. So... Tune in, follow, uh, and the last day of my Get Me Hired campaign is December 21st, so that'll be the last day I'll be going live every day, and after that I'll go back to my regular schedule of, uh, of going live once a week. So thank you so much for being here. I have a blessed fun day. Thank you, Dorothy, for sharing your insights and your expertise with us today, and thank you, everybody, so have a blessed fun Saturday. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.